Welcome everyone to our second quarter market review. I am Jeff L. Vander, and we will be jumping into the markets to see what happened over the quarter. So after a big start, strong start to the first quarter, uh, we saw the second quarter dial it down a little bit. U.S. equities were still positive for the quarter as were international equities, U.S. equities being up 3.2%. Uh, but the trend uh, for the leaders being really the uh, the large cap tech stocks, the Magnificent Seven that we've talked about, uh, they were the ones really continuing to lead the way uh, and lead the markets higher over the second quarter as they were over the first quarter as well uh, with the strong starts of the year. I mean, when you look at it for the year to date, large cap growth is over or outpacing large cap value by over 1400 basis points. So, uh, you know, we're really seeing some strong performance from that part of the market. And again, really driving the returns, not only for, uh, you know, for this quarter, but the past few quarters. International equities continue to lag. Uh, their U.S. equity counterparts uh, have still produced a, a positive return over the quarter of 1%. And then the fixed income markets, that's where we saw uh, a little uh, a little more occurring there. The market was in fact flat for the quarter at only up uh, 0.1%. But what we saw over the quarter now were expectations for rate hikes really being pulled back at a, at a, at a pretty big pace. And, you know, we began the year with a lot of expectations for multiple rate cuts. And we finished the quarter at potentially only having one or two. And we have a chart, our chart of the quarter will cover that, uh, which we'll get to here uh, at the end. But uh, last but not least, so as the Fed uh, held rate steady over the, uh, the quarter uh, and rate cuts were dialed back, what happened really is we saw those longer term fixed income positions uh, actually, uh, rates rise there, and those produce a negative return. For the year, still negative in fixed income for the broad markets. Uh, the labor market uh, continued to remain tight, uh, unemployment uh, rising to 4.1%. So let's dive uh, into a little more depth into all of the markets, uh, U.S. equity markets first. And you know, really, this is the same thing what I talked about with large cap growth leading the way, uh, you know, not only for the quarter, but really for the year to date in a pretty big way. If you look at the far right hand top chart growth versus value, you'll see that orange, uh, the orange uh, mountain chart bar chart that represents growth over value. There were, was a time uh, coming out of COVID where we saw a large value start to outperform, but that really has turned around in a pretty big way. And when you look at the sectors, the same story, really large cap growth is represented uh, in a big way by tech stocks or information technology. You can see that sector, uh, that sector's performance over the quarter year to date, and even one year and how strong that has been. And, and that's really been the story. I know we've talked about that in the past with the Magnificent Seven and the extent that to which they're driving returns and even the extent to which uh, they are now reflected in the index with those strong returns. They make up a uh, those tech stocks. So seven stocks in particular make up a very large trunk, uh, chunk of the index. So certainly maybe a little concentration risk forming uh, around yeah, your indexes, such as the S&P 500. So that's U.S. equity. Let's move to international equity markets. And... Uh, they have not been as strong as the U.S., but they certainly directionally uh, have been marching uh, positive as the U.S. has. And, uh, you know, one of one of the laggards here, though, you'll see developed over emerging markets in that top right hand chart uh, with developed outpacing emerging markets. Emerging markets really have been hurt with. Uh, the rise in rates, uh, that certainly hurts them more than maybe even developed markets. And that's the rise uh, more specifically in U.S. rates. Uh, but this quarter, they did come back and we're starting to see a, a, a little uh, 
maybe a rebound in performance from those markets because they have gotten, I don't know if it's really the opportunities more so than how uh, how maybe quote unquote cheap they have gotten. So that's uh, the international markets. Turning next to fixed income where I spoke briefly about rate expectations and what's been going on with the, the short-term rates, the Fed holding steady, uh, and but long-term rates, uh, which I think are more impacted by expectations. You'll see here when you look at performance by maturity, the top left-hand chart, uh, when you look out at seven uh, years and 10 plus years, you'll see for the quarter that uh, with rates rising really more so on the long end over the quarter, those were the areas uh, that got hit with some negative performance while the shorter term maturities uh, really were flat for the most part with the Fed holding short term rates steady. Cash is still king. And you can see that when you look at the sector performance uh, on the bottom, uh, certainly that may be a reason why uh, the long end is coming up uh, with with inflation still relatively high and uh, the Fed taking a pause. I think that's reset some market expectations there a, a little bit as well. Our next chart is the kaleidoscope. And this is just rank of asset class performance from year uh, to year, year to date. Again, same thing. We've talked about tech stocks and Magnificent Seven, and, and those are the folks found in the large cap growth style. And large cap growth, as they did last year, uh, leads this year. But certainly why you want to be diversified, because as you look beyond or, or past 2023 and the subsequent years, certainly the market leadership does change year to year. But our chart of the quarter, scaled back expectations in only three months, even four or five months, as we began the year, the expectations in the market for Fed cuts were significantly scaled back uh, over the past three months. And in fact, this is uh, this chart is as of May 31st and three months prior to that. But you'll see uh, the short term rates, you know, where we're at, at, you know, five point three percent or the where the market you know has rates currently for the fed funds rate really just three months ago going almost uh to four percent you'll see well now currently they're they're residing at 4.8 closer to five percent and that's almost a, a full percentage point in terms of where the market expects rates will be you know we, the last chart of the quarter we talked about uh, a, a you know potential for a soft landing with inflation now really even though it's running higher than where the fed wants it to be you know really in line with historical norms the economy is still moving along inflation is not that bad setting us up for a soft landing uh, you know i i really think for the market to be expecting multiple rate cuts by the end of the year was probably a little more uh, than the market should have been expected. But now looking at it, uh, the market probably, I think as of today, is maybe looking at maybe one uh, or two uh, cuts. And of course, for the Fed to do that, what they're looking for is inflation numbers to come down and to prevent any recession. But first, uh, you know, I think they want to make sure that the economy is in a good position as well. So they're not going to go and overheat from an inflationary inflation perspective. Uh, so any rate cuts do not start to overheat the economy again and, and, and really keep those inflation rates high. So that was the theme of the quarter. Those are the numbers for the quarter. Uh, thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next time.